In this lesson, you're going to learn how to render messages to the browser window as opposed to having them show up down below in the terminal. Now to get this done, we'll be using the very popular mustache templating library. That's going to give us everything we need to define HTML templates and render them with our data from JavaScript. So we'll be able to render all sorts of dynamic content to the page. The first thing we're going to do is move into index.html and we'll be setting up a new script tag to load in the library that we're going to need, and we can find that over in the browser. So all of the libraries we'll be using for the chat application I've put together at the following link, that is links.mead.io forward slash chat libs. If you visit this, it's going to redirect you over to a GitHub gist and this contains a few different script tags with three libraries. Now we're only going to use one of them in this lesson. We'll use the other two shortly though, so I figured we might as well just grab them all right now. The first library is mustache, which we'll be using in this lesson to render our templates. The next library is moment, which we'll be using to manipulate time and show the time a message was sent in the browser window. And finally, QS, which stands for query string, and that's going to allow us to set up room names and usernames a bit later in the section. Now, once again, we'll talk about all of these libraries in detail when we start to use them, but for now, let's grab all three script tags and bring them over to index.html. Right here, what I'm going to do is paste them in right up top. So I load in my libraries, I load in socket.io, then I load in my custom JavaScript code. Now here we're loading all of the libraries in via cdnjs.com, that is a CDN for JavaScript libraries. If you wanted to, you could also choose to download all of these files and include them in your public directory, and then load them in like we did with our chat.js file. Now let's go ahead and create our very first template, and that's going to happen right here inside of index.html. We can define a template and then we can render it as many times as we need to. Now this template is going to be for an individual message, which means we'll be using this template multiple times for every single message that needs to get shown to the user. Now to actually create the template, what we do is we set up a script tag, which might seem a bit weird at first, but bear with me for the moment. We're going to set up a script tag, and inside of here, we're going to end up putting HTML. So for example, I can create a div element right here, opening and closing it. And then inside of there, I could create a paragraph as well with some text like this is a message. I'll go ahead and close that paragraph. And now what we're going to do is set up a couple attributes on script to get all of this working. The first thing we're going to do for all of our templates is define an ID, a way to target this template from chat.js in just a few moments. Right here, I'm going to call this one message hyphen template. I like to end all of my templates with template just to be explicit about what exactly it is. And next up, we're going to set type equal to text forward slash HTML to let the browser know that we have HTML right inside of here for the template. Now that we have the template created, we can actually use the mustache library to render this somewhere in our application. Now currently we don't have a good place to put our messages on the screen, so what I'm going to do is create one, then we'll actually render some inside of here. Anywhere on the page, just below the title for the page, what we're going to do is create a div. This is just going to be a container for all new messages right here. I'll give it the ID of messages and we're done. There's no need to put anything inside of here. We'll be adding things inside of there dynamically as chat.js goes through the process of getting new chat messages. Now with all of this code in place, we have made zero changes to how our chat application is going to render. If I head over to the browser, go to localhost 3000 and give things a refresh, we're not seeing our template code anywhere and that's a good thing. We should not see our templates by default, we should only see them when we actually render content. Now in a few moments we'll learn how to add dynamic values inside of here, but for the moment, 
let's get this static template rendered. Now, inside of chat.js, we have to figure out where it makes sense to render messages, and that's right here, in the socket event listener for the message event. Now, in order to render the template, we need two important things. One, I need the template itself, and two, I need access to the place I want to render the template, that is my div up above. So we're gonna end up selecting both of those. Under elements, I'll create a single new variable called dollar sign messages. And for this one, I'll use document.querySelector once again to grab an element by its ID. And in this case, messages is gonna allow us to grab that div. Now we also want to grab our template right here. I'll create a new little section using a comment called templates. Now for the moment, we only have a single one, but we'll be adding more as we continue through this section. And right here, we'll create a single constant called message template. And all we're going to do is select that script tag by its ID. So that's document.querySelector. Selecting by ID, just like we have done plenty of times before, but in this case, the ID is the one we put on that script tag, which mine was message hyphen template, matching up exactly with what we have right here. Now this is gonna give us access to that element itself. What we really need for our templates though is the HTML contained inside, and our elements have an inner HTML property, which gives us access to that. This is what we need in order to render the template correctly. So we have the template right here, and we have the location we want to render the template up above. With both of those in place, we're now ready to actually render something to the browser when a new message comes in. Now this is a two-step process, and the first step is to compile our template with the data we wanna render inside of it. Now for the moment, this is a static template, so it's not too exciting, but we have to work through this step nonetheless, and we'll add dynamic data in in just a couple of minutes. What we're going to do is create a constant called HTML. This is going to store the final HTML will actually be rendering in the browser. Then right here, we use the mustache library to get it. That is mustache spelled this way. I know there are other spellings for mustache depending on where in the world you are, but this is the spelling used by the library. Then it's dot render followed by the template as the first and only required argument. Now, there are other arguments we'll talk about in just a moment where we can provide the data we want to use, but once again, no data just yet. Now, the next line and the final line we're going to add in order to get this to work has to do with the messages div. So we have that div and we want to add stuff inside of it. For that, we'll be using the insert adjacent HTML method. This allows us to insert other HTML adjacent to the element we've selected, in this case, that messages div. And the first argument is a string, and right here we have a few different options. I have after begin, which would add it just at the top inside of the div. This would mean that newer messages would show up first. I also have after end. This would be after the element closes, so it wouldn't even be, be inside of our messages div. I have before begin, which is before that messages div, and then I have before end, which is before the messages div ends, so inside of it. So right here, before end would add new messages at the bottom inside of the div, and then after begin would add new messages at the top inside of the div. Before end is the option we want, and then we just provide the HTML, which I have in that variable defined on the line just above. From here, we can now see our template rendered. So make sure all your files are saved. Head over to the browser and give things a refresh. Right here, I see this is a message showing up because we got that welcome message from the server. If I type something else and hit enter, we can see our template is rendered a second time. Now, this alone is a good start, but it's not particularly useful because what we really want to do is render the message text inside of there. Let's go ahead and figure out how we can get that done. Now, over in index.html, to do this, we'll be making a small change to our template. When we're working with mustache, there's a syntax we can use to inject values inside. So first up, we find the place we want to put the value, for us, we're going to clear the paragraph tag of any static content, 
and we're going to put the message right here. Then we open two curly braces and we close two curly braces. Inside of there, we reference one of the values we pass in. Now, we haven't passed any values in yet, but we're about to, and we're going to call that message. So right here, we can go ahead and put the message right inside of the paragraph. So when the mustache library actually compiles this template, everything I have highlighted will be replaced with the value for message. Now let's go ahead and actually provide a value for message so we see something render when a new message comes in. Over here, we provide data for our template as the second argument to render. This is an object, and on here, we can provide as many key value pairs as we want. Now, the keys are the things we're accessing in the template, and in our case, we just said we wanted to access message right here. That means we need to set up message on this object. So I'm going to set up message and its value will come from the variable with the same name up above our function parameter. And I can just use the shorthand syntax for that. Perfect. So now we're passing the data into the template. Mustache is going to compile things correctly. And this time around, we should see our dynamic messages showing up. What I'm going to do is save chat.js and give the browser a refresh once again. Right here, I see welcome, which is excellent, and I'll type out a message. This is dynamic. I'll hit enter, and that shows up as well. So now, using mustache and just maybe 12 lines of code, we're able to render dynamic templates to the browser, allowing the user to actually see the messages without needing to dig into the Chrome developer tools. Now, this system works really well for our text-based messages, but if I try to share my location, what am I going to get? Over here in the browser, I just get the location URL spit out in its entirety. It would be much nicer to render this inside of a clickable link with the text showing like this is my location. There's no need to show the entire URL when a simple link would get the job done. Now, actually getting all of that done is going to require a small amount of restructuring. We're going to create a separate event for those location-based messages, so a separate event that the server will send to the client. We're going to talk about that in the next lesson, and it will be your challenge to get done. So let's jump right in to the next one.